I don't think people should be squeamish about retributive justice. Retributive justice has to do with the dignity of human beings as actors who own their actions and the dignity of people, especially in the case of murder, who they kill. Um, it's an insult to somebody where uh, a death of a human being is treated as basically just a minor setback to the flourishing of the whole, where your only concern is getting everybody back to tip-top shape as fast as possible. That can't be it. That can't be it. Um, retributive justice has its place. Retributive justice um, is is the only part of justice that explicitly refers to justice. Um, that being said, uh, it has to be with an aim also to um, to the good in some like here here's here's how I think about it right. It's a farce to treat it as concerned with human dignity and the dignity of the murdered if you're just sort of going by rote and just punishing people capitally with as a matter of procedure. Where you, in fact, don't actually care about the victims. This is just the thing we do to violent criminals. No. I think the appropriate time for capital punishment or whatever is when you are dealing with a person who... To your judgment, and this all comes down to judgment in the end, to the judgment of the appropriate bodies, cannot be saved. And by saved, I don't mean in the sense of put to work in a factory somewhere and just we can hope and pray they'll never kill somebody again or whatever. I mean, they cannot be saved and they cannot be made to be truly remorseful for what they've done and to become the kind of human being who isn't a stain on the existence of our species. Um... In the event of that, where somebody in that community can find some reason to actually care about the victim. Um, in the event of, and, and it's it's tricky, but like, in order to get to a point where you can justifiably kill someone for committing murder, say, I think it's important that there be people existing in that context um, who are actively pained on behalf of the murdered by um, the the murderer continuing to exist in an unrepentant state. Does that make sense? That's sort of where I'm at. That's, by the way, just to be perfectly clear, that's not a uh, that's not a proposal for legislation. This is just a, a description of my emotional response to the thing. Like, what seems right. Um... Like, for example, I think it's far from even just being uh, not the right thing to do. I think it's morally wrong in the event of a rapist murderer, say, who is laughing about his crimes, um, to be allowed to persist in prison if he finds it satisfying, or if he finds himself at least still able to continue to laugh. Um, or we can even be more uh, particular, um, unwilling to express remorse. Um, I think it is actually a moral wrong to insist for dogmatic reasons to make that person persist to exist. Sorry, make that person's existence persist um, while the family of the victims uh, are still, while the families of the victims are still suffering as a result of that. I think that that is wrong on multiple levels. I think it's destructive to social harmony. Um, I think it's more, I think it's destructive to morale. I think it's emotionally pernicious to the families of the victims. And I think it dishonors the fam the victims themselves um, by permitting this person on the bare grounds of, again, like a dogmatic stance towards um, certain procedures at the end of the day, because those procedures did not save the victim's life. Um, on the dogmatic insistence of, of certain procedures, uh, to allow their families, in addition to them, to continue to be harmed um, for the sake of what? Like, it's it becomes insane. Does that make sense? It probably doesn't. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking very off the cuff here. but In practice, I'm not even sure if I'm even for the death penalty at all, but, like, when I think about how things ought to be in my head, that's that's sort of where I go.
Okay, I think we've seen... What happens if we jump ahead? Oh god, this still keeps going. I think we've seen enough. I haven't seen anything that really changes my mind anyways. Granted, we're still early. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, don't throw out the blue mug. That's still clean. I'll still use it later. Thank you. Um, I think we've got we've got the idea. They're being harmed by him existing. Uh, yeah, potentially. Look, if you live with the knowledge that the person who killed someone you love is laughing about it somewhere else, that's going to affect you. That's just a fact. Like, that's not even... I don't think that's even disputable. And it's going to affect you in a very pernicious way. You are not going to live peacefully after that while that's going on. Maybe never, but it's going to be a lot worse. That's a bit like saying gay marriage harms my marriage. Whether people do or do not do does not affect me. Well, maybe it should affect you, Nicholas. Maybe that's a moral failing on your part. All right, we're going to stop with this uh, segment because, I, I, again, it's four hours long. I, I don't want to go through the whole thing. I think we get the idea. Death penalty should require the highest degree of certainty and zero chance of rehab for crimes that are most severe. Yeah, I agree with that. Again, insofar as we want to even accept the death penalty. Look, I'm okay with a death penalty not even being a thing. I'm not wedded to the idea that we need to kill certain people. But we need to be very honest about what we're doing. We are dogmatically insisting that we are allowing certain extreme forms of evil to persist um, on principle. And that's fine. Like, at, that at least shows respect. You're acknowledging the cost. I have, I have no problem with that. 